let us delve a little bit deeper into ggplot geoms. So we have seen these two graphs before. So for example, it's the same set of data for which on the left hand side, we see a scatter plot of displacement versus highway miles. It's the same MPG data frame. On the right hand side, the same data is displayed a little bit differently in the form of a smooth line. Okay, so this is uh, the same data, but what we are visually seeing is quite different, right? So both plots describe the same data, but there is a difference. The difference is that we are using different visual objects to display the same data. Okay, in uh, ggplot speak, visual objects are called geoms, short for geometry, I suppose. So the plot on the left was generated, as you can already guess, by using the geom point, uh, geom point is what generates a scatter plot. And we have said uh, uh, the displacement is mapped to the x-axis, the highway mileage is mapped to the y-axis, and that's what you're getting here, displacement on the x-axis, highway mileage on the y-axis. Whereas everything is exactly the same here, except that instead of geom point, we are using geom smooth, which generates a smoothed line. Okay, now in the previous course, you have encountered the regression line that can be drawn across a set of points. So the regression line would be a straight line that probably goes through something like this. That would be the straight line that you would get. Whereas Geom Smooth by default doesn't draw the linear regression line. Instead, it draws what is called as a locally uh, smooth line. In other words, to uh, to get the point of a particular line, it doesn't consider all the points. Uh, it considers only the points which are locally close to a given point, right? So to get where this, the line on point two should, should fall, it's going to take only the points which are close to that uh, and average them in some way and get this point, okay? So this is what is called as a smooth line. And what you're seeing around the line, the gray band that you're seeing around the line is essentially the 95% confidence interval. In the first course, you did study confidence intervals. So what this is saying basically is that although the smooth line gives you a point estimate at every point here, but of course, there is a certain degree of uncertainty associated with that. And what they're saying is that the 95% confidence interval is what you're seeing here with uh, the gray band. Okay, that's by default the confidence interval comes. If you don't want it, you can suppress it as we will see shortly. So that's the point geom and this is the smooth geom. That's the only difference. Otherwise, all the mappings are exactly the same. X and Y mappings are the same. The data is the same. Everything is the same, except that we just used a different geom in both cases. Now, there are many different geoms available in ggplot. So for example, geom line would produce a line. Geom bar would produce a bar. Geom box plot would produce a box plot. Geom point is the only thing for which the kind of plot is not reflected by the word that comes after the geom. Okay, so that's what they've chosen. They could have called geom scatter, but they chose to call it geom point. And there are, of course, many, many other geoms that we won't even be talking about. But there is a ggplot cheat sheet. If you search on Google, you will find the ggplot cheat sheet. It's just a two-page document that summarizes everything about ggplot. Of course, it's not going to teach you the underlying concepts of ggplot, but it's going to tell you all the functions that are available. And once you get used to ggplot, you will find that the cheat sheet is pretty useful. So that was the code that generated our scatter plot. And within the scatter plot, within geom point, we mapped various things. And as I had already mentioned to you, mapping basically is what maps aspects of the data to aspects of the display. Okay, so here we are saying displacement should go on the x-axis, highway mileage should go on the y-axis, right? So x-axis and y-axis, they are part of the plot. Displacement and highway are part of the data. So we are saying this aspect of the data should get into this aspect of the plot. So that's why they call it as a mapping because you're mapping between the data and uh, geometric elements of the plot. Okay, so there are many different kinds of aesthetics available. Till now, we have seen the X aesthetic, the Y aesthetic, and I think in the previous lecture, we also saw color and uh, line type and so on. So there are many aesthetics available. 
Now, not all aesthetics are applicable to all the geoms. Okay, so the applicable aesthetics depend upon the kind of geom you're using. So, for example, uh, X and Y are applicable aesthetics for geom point. Okay, because after all, to plot a point, you need to mention both the X and the Y coordinates. So, X and Y are clearly relevant for the geom point aesthetic. On the other hand, you will see that we will encounter later on geom bar. And for the bar aesthetic, geom bar aesthetic, the y axis is not relevant. You need to specify only the x axis. Okay. Similarly, there is a color aesthetic which is valid for geom point, okay, which means that you're saying the point should be painted in this color. Okay, so that is valid for geom point. It's also valid for line. Okay, so the color aesthetic is valid for many geoms. Whereas there is an aesthetic called line type, which is what type of line should be used. In other words, should it be a solid line, a dashed line, a dotted line, or whatever? Clearly, that is not relevant for geom point. That is relevant only for aesthetics, uh, only for geoms in which some lines are involved. Okay, so clearly the applicable aesthetics depend on the geom that we are uh, using. Okay, so shape applies to geom point, shape would not apply to geom line. Okay, so line type obviously would apply to line but not to point and so on and so on. So that's how geoms and aesthetics work. Okay, so in this overall expression we are calling ggplot and the geom point function, right? So notice that there are two function calls going on here. This is the general structure of any ggplot plot. Okay, so first you call the ggplot package, most of the, no, not package, the function, most of the time when you call the ggplot function, you would also indicate what is the data that you're going to use for the particular plot. But as you will see shortly, it's not essential to do that along with the ggplot call. You can also supply the data to geom point. We'll see all of that later. For now, think of it as if the ggplot call will always have the data uh, indicated. And then of course you call one or more geoms. In this example, we are calling just one geom. And of course, we keep on stringing each geom and everything that we are adding with a plus sign. So in this plot, if you wanted one more geom, you would have just said plus at the end of this and added a geom here. Okay, so we are really calling the ggplot function, the geom point function. And of course, to construct the mapping, we are also calling the aesthetic or AES function. Okay. Now, of course, the, the result of the aesthetic function is what we are passing as the mapping argument. The result of that whole thing is being passed to the map as the mapping argument. So again, just to be clear, the ggplot function has only one argument, which is the data that we are going to use. The geom point function also has only one argument. The result of AES x equals displacement y equals highway. The AES function we are calling with two arguments x and y. Okay, so mapping is a named argument to the geom point function. Okay, and we, we saw this earlier. And data is the named argument to the ggplot function. And of course, x and y are named arguments to the AES function. x and y are not direct arguments to the geom point function. Right? The geom point function has only one argument, the whole mapping. Okay, and the AES function has two arguments, X and Y. By now we understand all of this, I'm just clarifying. Okay, you can add additional aesthetics. So for example, here we are saying data equals MPG, and we are using the geom smooth layer in this particular case. Okay, instead of geom point that we saw in the earlier case. So you, for this, we are mapping X is displacement, Y is highway, and then we are saying line type equals drive. Okay, that is we are saying, make the type of the line, because after all, geom smooth generates a line, make the, make the type of the line depend upon the drive of a vehicle. Okay, so now implicitly what this is going to do is it is going to divide the data into, in this example, into three sets, because there are three types of drive available in our data set, front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, and four wheel drive. So what it's going to do is to partition the data into three parts because we have said line type equals drive. It's going to partition into three, three parts and generate a smooth line for each of them. 
Okay, so that's what we are getting here. Right, so instead of getting one line, as was the case in an earlier example, we now have three lines and each line is of a different type because we said line type depends on drive and then it's saying this solid line is for the four wheel drive and so on. Okay, there are uh, the this line is for front wheel drive, the line with short dashes and the line with somewhat longer dashes is for the rear wheel drive. Okay, so we got three lines simply because we said line type, line type equals drive. Okay, so it's a simple matter to add additional aesthetics by just adding them as arguments within the AES function. Now the nice thing or you could say the other way is that after all, I had said that the applicable aesthetics depend upon the geom, right? So it is quite possible that I may pass an aesthetic to the, uh, to a, uh, to, I, may, I may pass an argument to the AES function which is not valid for the, cons for the supposed geom. So for example, suppose there was an aesthetic like shape, which is not applicable to geom smooth, but here I said shape equals something. Okay, the good thing is that ggplot will simply ignore it because that is an inapplicable geom for that for inapplicable aesthetic for the geom ggplot plot will just ignore it and it will give you a warning message saying uh, this thing was ignored okay so it's not going to generate an error it's just going to ignore what is inapplicable okay so again this time we are adding one more geom one more aesthetic color so we are saying not only should the line type depend upon the drive uh, the color should also depend on the drive. So obviously, as you can imagine, not only do the three lines have different types, they also have different colors. And because of the fact that both of the aesthetics, line type and color, are mapped to the same, uh, same element of the data, namely the drive, it generated only one legend for us. Right? So within the legend, you see the line type and the color combined into one. 